It's been said that good people will do good things and evil people will do evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. But even as an atheist myself, I have to ask the question, does it really? The Nobel laureate Steven Weinberg is famously quoted as saying, with or without religion, you would have good people doing good things and evil people doing evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. This idea is still very popular among modern atheists, and you hear it quoted often during debates. As the great physicist Steven Weinberg has very aptly put it, in the ordinary moral universe, the good will do the best they can, the worst will do the worst they can. But if you want to make good people do wicked things, you'll need religion. But well, well, those well, well, people who do terrible things do it believing that they are righteous and good and they think that they're doing the will of their God. So they are, they're not evil people, they're actually good people by their own lights. They believe they're doing good things and that's why religion is evil because it can make you do evil things believing that they are good. Now, just to be clear, Weinberg, Dawkins, and Hitchens appear to be talking specifically about evil things which are done here on Earth whether it's withholding medical treatment, discriminating against people unfairly, or various forms of violence. Their concern is not that some kind of supernatural evil is being done, like Christians sending people to Muslim hell or Muslims ruining people's Hindu karma. Their concern is the fact that good people are doing evil things here on Earth, and their argument is that this requires religion. Unfortunately, as convenient as this line of rhetoric is for me, an outspoken atheist, I don't actually think it's true. I don't think it's accurate to say that religion is a necessary element to make good people do bad things. Religion certainly can do this, and as I will argue, I think religion may be uniquely poised to do this, but to say that religion is necessary for redirecting good intentions into bad actions is demonstrably false. There are many instances where, for completely non-religious reasons, good people have done evil things while thinking them to be good, or inflicted suffering onto other people while falsely believing it would all be worth it in the end. Many of the 20th century communists, for example, sincerely believed that their economic and political practices were the best options for humanity in the long term, even if they sometimes were painful to implement in the moment displacing people from their homes, forcing them to change their jobs and their lifestyles, hell, even intentionally killing some of them, many of the communists seem to have believed that it would all be worth it in the end if humans really could be made to live cooperatively for millennia to come. It just... didn't work. As another set of examples where good people have done evil things, we can look back at all the crazy medical interventions we no longer perform, because we now know that they don't actually help. Bloodletting, for example, is now known to achieve little to no positive results, and it's all but guaranteed to make the patient worse. Factually speaking, bloodletting is an evil thing to do to a person, especially when they're sick. You might as well smack them upside the head or dump cold water on them for all the good it does. And yet, good people insisted on performing bloodletting on the sick. Was it because these people were deeply religious? Is it because God told them to do it? Or is it simply because they were factually incorrect about how the body works and they didn't have the scientific or statistical tools to know if they were actually achieving the good results they desired? We say that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Because it is. But there are many roads to hell, be they supernatural, medical, economic, or even just day-to-day -day interactions. Religion is not the only road to hell which is paved with good intentions. Steven Weinberg was wrong when he argued that religion is necessary for good people to do evil things. The only thing that is necessary for good people to do evil things is for good people to act upon an incorrect understanding of the world and to be insulated from the undesirable consequences of their actions, to be unaware that the promised greater good is not being achieved or even to be unaware of the suffering they're creating in the first place, or both. For good people to do evil things, they simply need to be misinformed about how the world operates and to be unaware of the evil consequences of their actions. 
This is not categorically unique to religion. This happens all the time. Now, all that being said, I think religious ideas are especially capable of causing good people to do evil things in this way, because, by its nature, religion does not allow people to check if the promised greater good is actually being achieved through their actions here on Earth. Most religions are not primarily concerned about the consequences here on Earth, but in heaven or hell, or in our karma, or in the mind of God. The consequences most religions are trying to achieve, the greater goods which justify all the earthly suffering, are simply unobservable. This is a problem because it means that there is no way to check if these greater goods are actually being achieved, at least not with any degree of reliability. Can we ask God if he felt glorified when Mother Teresa spent time around dying people without really helping them? Can we measure how many extra people went to hell after we legalized gay marriage in this country? Can we ask Jesus what happens to aborted fetuses? Can we take a peek into heaven to see if disowning your gay son really saved his soul? Can we confirm that cutting up baby boys' dicks really does grant them a seat in the kingdom of God? Nope, not really. Except, of course, via conflicting private revelations, hashtag trust me bro. You could show a communist the economic data from different countries which clearly demonstrate that communism does not achieve its goals. You could show a plague doctor the medical data which clearly demonstrate that bloodletting doesn't actually improve patient outcomes on average. These ideas eventually ran into the hard wall of observable reality. We have the data. We can check the results. But where is the data about how many people are in heaven? Where is the data about the behaviors which best glorify God? Where is the data about the actions which are most likely to land a person in hell? There isn't any. There is no way to check your answer. And yet, religious people soldier on with outstanding confidence as they intentionally permit and cause suffering all around them. This is the true horror of religion. Not simply that it convinces good people to do evil things, but that it convinces them to do these things to such a strong degree, and critically, without having a way to check if the greater good is actually being achieved. Most religions are not primarily concerned with trying to achieve results here on Earth where we can actually measure them. They are instead primarily concerned with results out in some parallel universe, the spiritual realm, a place which, conveniently, we cannot reliably access or measure. Indeed, because we cannot reliably access or measure the spiritual realm, this means that there is no amount of human suffering, no crime or torture or genocide here on earth, which religious people cannot justify to themselves. They can simply assert whatever spiritual rules or spiritual consequences they feel are required to offset their crimes, with no worry that anyone will check their answers. Religion is not necessary for good people to do evil things. It's just really, really effective.